One of the best things about multiple linear regression is that you can add lots of variables to your model. One of the worst things about multiple linear regression is that you can add lots of variables to your model. So this will be an explanation of how we might be able to work with lots of variables in a multiple linear regression and how to keep track of them all. And so we can think about doing something like all regression subsets. And so there are some packages available in R, and we're going to use the leaps package to help us to fit all of the possible models with all of the different combinations of variables that we can in our, in our R session. So this process of doing all subsets regression selects all the possible predictors and runs all possible model combinations using your variables. What you can see in the figure is that each row represents a different model. And the models are ranked from the highest adjusted R squared to the lowest adjusted R squared. And so we can see the regression subset indicates that a model with an intercept, the weight, and the sex of the falcon performs best. That is, uh, given these two are dark colored, these p-values are significant for this model. And so we can see the second best model would be one that includes an intercept, the weight, the tail length, and the sex. And so this would be all three independent variables included in the model. And so you get a good model there, but it's not as good as the original one. And so you can see there are different combinations here of all the different models you can fill up and create depending on your data. And so basically if the white space you see here is, is blank and it's white, it means that it didn't include that variable in the model. If it's gray, it means that the variable is only marginally significant in the output. And so you might think, well, you can start and you can create all of these subsets of regression, but how might you remove them? And so there is a process called stepwise regression. And so stepwise regression selects a subset of predictors from a larger set. When we do this in R, we can use the step function to help with this. So what's the general approach? The general approach is to first set a significance level for deciding when to enter a predictor into the model. We can call this the alpha to enter variable. So we also need to set a significance level for deciding when to remove a predictor. And so we might call this the alpha to remove. And so typically these values, alpha to enter and alpha to remove, are not as, uh, as conservative as say a 0.05, but we tend to be a little bit more liberal in terms of how we might enter variables into models and remove them. And so we typically set them to 0.15 as one common value. And so the idea here is that we want to design models until adding an additional, additional predictor does not yield a t-test p-value below the alpha to enter, or that value of say 0.15. And so we're going to kind of do this iteratively until we find out the best model through this stepwise process. So there are a couple of ways you can step through all the variables in your model. The first is what we call forward regression. And so here we begin with no variables in the model and we move forward, adding one variable at a time. So you can think about adding another variable each time and then comparing it to that alpha to enter and alpha to remove value. So if you're really just data fishing, you've got say a very large data set, you've got a lot of predictor variables, you can use this approach to find a few key variables that might influence your response variable of interest. Well there's also a backwards approach. This is when you start with all the possible variables in your model and move backwards. And by doing this, you'll remove one variable at a time, depending on what that value for alpha to remove is. So we generally suggest this if you have a modest size of potential variables and you want to eliminate a few. In doing this, you can work backwards. 
Well, the other approach is to do what's called stepwise regression, and this combines elements of both forwards and backwards. It's a little bit difficult to explain visually, but instead we'll go through an example in R that will do this for us. Another really important thing that we need to be concerned about when we do multiple linear regression is multicollinearity. And so this is when two independent variables are highly correlated with each other. And if you have a multiple linear regression with, say, 10 different variables, some of those variables could be correlated with one another that you have serious multicollinearity in your regression model. Another way to think about this is if you move one variable, or if you hold one variable constant, well, some other variable is in effect also constant because the two variables are so correlated with one another. The problems with this is that the regression coefficients you develop, your values for beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, they can have a lot of uncertainty associated with them. You can also find that the sums of squares do not accurately account for the regression sums of squares and the residual sums of squares. And that can be an issue, in particular when you want to make estimates from your regression equation. So some of the solutions here to remove some of the independent variables, or maybe to run separate models with different independent variables, depending on the nature of the model. There are lots of other ways to address multicollinearity, and many researchers have different approaches for doing this. One of the ways to check for multicollinearity through using a number is to calculate the variance inflation factor. So this is a handy number that measures the degree of multicollinearity within a regression. And so generally, if you have a higher variance inflation factor, you've got a higher collinearity. And so we can say that a variance inflation factor for a single independent variable is obtained using the r squared of the regression of that variable against all the other independent variables. And so generally, when we look and see what's a high variance inflation factor, it's generally anything greater than 10. We're going to use a package in R to help us with this. We're going to use the CAR package. This is a really valuable data set that helps us to address multicollinearity in multiple linear regression.